Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are Florida. So the fish and the Braves get ready for game two of this three game series. Feels like it's going to be a very pleasant evening here at the ballpark. Nathan Evaldi, Austin Kearns, and the fish trying to get to Paul Mahalam and the Atlanta Braves. Hi, everyone. Rich Waltz along with Tommy Hutton. It felt like a game last night where something was on the line, and certainly it was. The Braves will win last night, are five back now behind the Nationals, who were rained out tonight so they can creep within four and a half games. It had that feel to it. Yeah, the Nationals will have a doubleheader against the Dodgers tomorrow, but you like the way the Marlins played the game last night. They got down four runs early. They, they didn't roll over and die. They battled back, and they really made it a good ball game. It was fun to watch Gorky's Hernandez last night. This is a guy that's been involved in his career in three big trades finally getting a chance to play at the big league level. Yeah very interesting when you look at his lineage as to how he got here the 25 year old Venezuelan signed by the Tigers traded to Atlanta in the Jair Jurgens deal. The Braves traded him to Pittsburgh for Nate McLeod and of course the Marlins acquired Gorky Hernandez for Gabby Sanchez. Well last night was the first time in his career he had a three hit game and he made it exciting. He had a single a double and a triple his first three at bat so he had a shot to hit for the cycle which no Marlin has ever done. It's fun to watch a guy like that in a game like last night where it really mattered for Atlanta and Nathan Evaldi is going to experience that tonight as well because obviously the Braves are red hot right now. They're trying to chase down the Nationals. Evaldi did not fare well his first time against them. Repeat the delivery. Use all the pitches. That's what Nate Evaldi has to try to do. His uh, best outing of the year so far was that uh, game against the Mets seven innings. He really had a rough outing last time out against the Atlanta Braves. Now trading deadline when this guy came over with Reed Johnson that wasn't a sexy trade but it's been a real good one for the Braves. It didn't make the big headlines but it made some headlines but the Braves happy to have Paul Mahalam. Look at the line of the game he threw against the Marlins at Wrigley Field when he was a Cub. Mahalam getting ready for the Braves. Evaldi ready to go for the fish with the roof open. This should be fun. A homer shy of the cycle. How come the Marlins don't have a cycle? We'll discuss Jeff Conine, Craig Minervini when we get back.
and this should be fun tonight. Braves and Marlins. Let's head out to center field. Jeff Conine, Craig Minervini. Rich, as you mentioned, Gorky Hernandez uh, with triple, double, single, all within the first four innings. Didn't get the cycle. No Marlin has ever gotten the cycle. He did that last night, got the three hits. Jeff, who would be the Marlin that eventually might crack through and get the first cycle in team history? Well, when you look at uh, the potential for a cycle, you got to look at power and speed because the triple is uh, usually a speedster. So I'm going to go with the uh, outside shot of Giancarlo Stanton, obviously because of the power. He's got some speed. But Jose Reyes would probably be my pick for uh, the first Marlin to hit for a cycle. Good triples park. We talked to Jose, who hit us for the cycle with the Mets a few years ago. It is hard. I mean, you know, that's something very difficult to do. I mean, you know, because you have to do every every little aspect of the game. I mean, you know, hit a wise. I mean, you know, like I said, you know, I did it one time, you know, and the last part for me was easy. was the base C, you know, so that's kind of getting easy for me. Well, you got the, you got the homer triple and double yeah. out of the way first. Yeah, first, you know, so, you know, but, you know, three points be part of my game, you know, but to get the home run, you know, I know he too many home runs, so, you know, to get that out of the way quick, I mean, you know, that was big for me. At this ballpark, Gorky's last night went single, double, triple early through the fourth inning. This park would seem to be a spot where maybe one night, no Marlins ever done it, by the way. No? No Marlins ever. Wow. I don't yeah. even know that. You yeah, know. so this park, though, do you think could be conducive if you can get the homer out of the way? I mean, yes. Yes, I mean, because if you hit the ball in the gap, it's going to be triple for sure. I mean, you know. But like I said, tough part is hit it out. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, so everybody know our ball pie is a little bit big, you know. But like I said, you know, it's going to happen. I mean, I don't, I don't even know that no Marley had a mm -hmm. cycle. So, you know, hopefully I'm going to be the first one. <laughs> Four no hitters, but no cycles. It's pretty, yeah. uh, it's pretty a rare feat. And Jose Reyes feels pretty confident he's going to be the first Marlin to do it. He loves it. You know, I love that smile. Aaron Hill had two this year for Arizona. And they've already had six cycles in D-backs history in a 15-year history of D-backs baseball. All right, we've got Marlins Braves coming up. Game two with the roof open at Marlins Park. Next. Braves and Marlins ready to go. Marlins Park. Atlanta at 85 and 63 and five out in the east. Seven and a half up in the wild card. Pinch of pennies. First pitch is up and out from Nathan Evaldi to Michael Bourne with Martin Prado and Jason Hayward to follow. And the 22 year old Evaldi uncorks a fastball at 96 miles an hour. His 20th start this year between the Dodgers and the Marlins.
C.B. Buckner calling balls and strikes, and that would be a strike, and it's one and two. Never been a question about the velocity of Nate Evaldi. It's the command of that pitch, his other breaking pitches. The interesting thing, he's gotten a decision every start as a Marlin. Nine starts, he's three and six. And Bourne, who has hit a funk right now, swings and misses 0 for 6 already in the series. The Braves lineup looks this way. There's skipper Freddy Gonzalez. SunTrust brings you their lineup. You've seen Bourne. Now meet Martin Prado. He just hits, especially against the Marlins. He hits. Jason Hayward in right. Chipper's in there at third base. Freddie Freeman at first. Dan Ugla homered last night. Brian McCann's back in. Jose Constanza is in left field. And Paul Mahalam, the lefty, hits ninth. And here's that guy Prado, who last night banged out four hits. And you never know where you're going to see him. Tonight, he's at shortstop. Andrelton Simmons aggravated a shoulder injury last night, diving for some balls. And so Prado gets the call to play short. And he smacks a liner right to Carlos Lee, which takes us right to Miami's defense tonight. That's a nice segue. Good positioning by El Caballo. Here's the defense brought to you by Cleveland Clinic, Florida. Ruggiano's in left. Corky Hernandez, Austin Kearns with the start tonight. Gil Velazquez at third. Reyes, Solano, and Carlos Lee around the infield. And John Bucks behind the plate. He's in there against the lefty, Paul Mahalo. Jason Hayward takes a fastball for a strike. 97 from Evaldi on that fastball. Hayward. One for four, scored a couple runs last night, and he pulls one out to second. Solano flips to first, and Nathan Evaldi, a nine pitch first inning. Folks, go to the Marlins page at FoxSportsFlorida.com. That's right, FoxSportsFlorida.com. Click on the Marlins page, then go to Game Connect, and then finally ask the broadcast. That's how to send us an email. You can tweet us at FS Marlins. We'll get to as many as we can. Right there, a Marlin fan tweeting the booth, wanting to know, Tommy, who chooses your tie and your shirt ensemble every night? Kind of a quick choice tonight because uh, we weren't sure the roof was going to be open or closed. So we had to make a last minute decision. Gorky Hernandez, Donovan Solano, and Jose Reyes against Paul Mahalam. And Hernandez fouls it back. Well, you want to see too now if Gorky Hernandez can build off that nice game he had last night. Paul Mahalam, a veteran, much uh, different pitcher. That the hitters will see tonight. He moves the ball around, changes speeds really well. In talking to those around the Braves that have seen Mahalam starts, and in eight starts, he's three and four with the Braves, they will tell you, you'll know early if he's got it or he doesn't. 
because when he's got it, he is really tough. Off speed pitch, and that's a swing, says Dan Iasonia. Well, in, in Wrigley Field, when he was a Cub against the Marlins and, and Mark Burley, he had it. He went eight innings, gave up five hits, and just one run. Hernandez hits a fly ball to the right. Hayward a few steps back, settles under it, and makes the catch. Marlins lineup is still without Giancarlo Stanton. He will not play until Friday, we've been told. SunTrust brings you the order. Donovan Solano coming up now. You got Reyes slotted behind him. Carlos Lee hitting cleanup. Justin Ruggiano hits fifth. Austin Curran sixth. John Buck seventh. Gil Velasquez gets a start at third base. Nathan Evaldi will hit ninth. There's Giancarlo, and according to Ozzie Guillen, not available to pinch hit tonight as well. And against the lefty, Donovan Solano slides up in the order to the number two spot. Done a nice job against the Braves this year, eight for 20. Solano pokes one to the right side. Ugly gathers it in, flips it on over to first. I think it'll really be interesting tonight for both clubs because the Marlins have played seven games with the roof open as we check on the defense the Braves defense brought to you by Cleveland Clinic Florida a lot of lefties in that lineup Constanza Bourne and Hayward Chipper Jones Prado Ugland Freeman and Brian McCann back in the lineup a little soreness in that hamstring but he's in there tonight so I think fly balls and pop flies will be uh, be interesting both sides ha haven't played under these conditions the Braves never have and the Marlins had those seven games early in the year. Reyes taking a strike from Mahalam who has retired the first two that he's faced. Mahalam not an overpowering guy and he works quickly misses outside. Reyes last night two for five you see the average at 285 and a couple weeks left in the season he's going to have to get really hot. To challenge 300. But 285 is a lot higher than he was just five, six days ago, where he had dipped into the mid 270s. He had a little stretch where he kind of went the other direction, but he's put it back together. After this pitch, I'll throw out the initial tweet of the night. That one pulled foul and out of play. All right, here's the tweet of the night. Why do the Marlins home uniforms say Miami? It's a question we had last week and there's a good look at it. And there's our Twitter handle and it's Twitter Tuesday hashtag Twitter Tuesday. Tommy you had the good answer last week. You want to go at this one. Yeah I, it's just to establish the uh, the franchise change in name and the, the new uniforms the new logo. There you go. Nicely done. Thank you. I had to get that in quick with that ground ball is short. <laughs> Two quick innings by Mahalam and Evaldi. Scoreless. Let's go to the second.
H.H. Craig brings you this ball game in high definition. Here we are in Miami with the roof open to Marlins Park. Coventry Healthcare second inning. Paul Mahalan was sharp in the bottom of the first. Nathan Evaldi was in the top of the first. And Evaldi gets Chipper Jones, Freddie Freeman, and Dan Ugla. Chipper the night off last night. But he stands in. Tomorrow night he is slated to play. And tomorrow night the Marlins are scheduled to honor him. And he bangs one into left field for a base hit. The old guy can still hit. Yep, base hit number 2,720. Now, that base hit draws him a little bit closer to the guy above him on the hit list. Pretty good name. Lou Gehrig. And as a result, the baseballs that are used while Chipper is at the plate have special Major League Baseball holograms on them just in case he pops one out or he has a base hit and it goes out of play. That's to authenticate the ball. Freddie Freeman goes after a, a high pitch and chops it foul down the first baseline. Freeman last night singled and scored in what was a four-run first highlighted by the Dan Ugla homer. By the, times, by the time the Braves were done with Wade LeBlanc, it was 6-0 Atlanta. Marlins came back, made it six to five, and lost the ball game eventually seven to five. Stacy in Wellington, Tommy, how many push-ups did you do today? Uh, today was not a push-up day. Oh, I yeah. thought you threw down the the push-up gauntlet last night. Oh, I did. I, I'm going to get on the site. I checked out the site today. Was a little confused as to how to pledge, but I was there, and I'll probably. Pledge about uh, two to three hundred push-ups a week. Pro versus GI Joe yeah. dot org. She also complimented you on the uh, silver jacket, black gray tie from last night. Oh, thank Stacy you. liked your ensemble last night. Just because I really need it, I may throw in the uh, sit-up challenge as well. <laughs> One and two. Ugla's on deck. In the dirt, and Buck smothers it. Speaking of challenges, the real challenge tonight is for Nathan Evaldi. We've talked about how lefties have hit him so much better than righties. Lefties have hit 333 against Evaldi, righties 224. Chopper to first. Lee gets it out there. The turn by Reyes is in time. Nicely done. 3-6-3. Three, three. Carlos Lee and Jose Reyes hooking up. Tell you what, Carlos Lee does a real nice job in setting himself and making sure he makes the good throw. You're not going to get the double play if you make a poor throw to second. He gave Jose Reyes a nice chest-high throw. And there was the relay, the double up Freeman. Would you agree that he's gotten better Much at first more, base? Yes, he has. From the first time we saw him two months ago? Yes. I'm with you on that. Here's Ugly. And yeah, he takes down low. So the point being, a lot of lefties in the lineup tonight for Nathan Evaldi to face. Kevin in Boynton Beach just received my World Baseball Classic tickets. For the qualifiers up in Jupiter. Any idea when tickets to the games at Marlins Park will go on sale? Pop up. And it's out of play. I would say go to worldbaseballclassic.com and I will ask as well and see when those tickets will go on sale. Breaking ball, there's a strike. Two and two. Brian McCann. Marlins didn't see him last night. David Ross got the start. McCann's been having some hamstring issues. 
3 2 pitch Uggles swings and misses and Evaldi works a quick second as well onto the bottom of the second Nathan Evaldi and the fish scoreless with the Braves. Ball game. Let's check in with Allison Williams. A dub. Rich, today Major League Baseball announced the 30 nominees for the Roberto Clemente Award. One nominee from each team in Major League Baseball. And for the Marlins, the nominee this year is Logan Morrison. For those of you that know Logan, you know he is very active in the community. He's raised over $300,000 to support the American Lung Association, a cause he was motivated to support because of the battle his father had and lost with lung cancer. And he's also done a lot of things here in the community. He's helped out at Miami's Children's Hospital. He did, of course, the visit visit overseas with the troops, with the Marlins, has done a lot of stuff with the Marlins Community Foundation. Here is what he said on Twitter after being named the nominee. He said, I'm truly honored to be selected as the Marlins nominee for the 2012 Roberto Clemente Award. There is the link where you can vote for him, MLB.com slash Clemente Award. And guys, if Logan isn't motivation enough to vote, all those who enter will automatically be registered for a chance to win a trip to the World Series this year. And Here's just some of the stuff Logan has done out in the community. There's the shots from him overseas. Working with the kids, he has his Lomo camp for a cure in his dad's honor. Also shaved his head for the Miami Children's Hospital, another cause he has done a lot for. So uh, Logan Morrison, certainly a worthy candidate for the Roberto Clemente Award. And there certainly have been uh, some greats that have won the award through the past 30 or so years, guys. And it is a, a terrific honor for Morrison, who does do a tremendous amount in the community, and we hope that uh, Morrison is on the mend after his knee surgery. Maybe next year, Tommy, he can be the Roberto Clemente Award winner and the Comeback Player of the Year. Boy, that sounds nice. Uh, yeah, we wish him the best in his uh, recovery after the knee surgery. Justin Ruggiano, a couple hits last night, followed by Austin Kearns. You saw Carlos Lee lining out. Both pitchers throwing a lot of early strikes and the counts 0 and 2. No, we miss having Lomo around, not only just seeing him and interacting with him, but seeing him in the lineup as well. Ball in the dirt. Alex the Turp, who's always a, a good good read when it comes to a tweet or an email. Guys, remember when Braves pitcher Andy Messersmith had a jersey that read Channel 17? Yeah, to promote, only, only lasted one, to, one game. To promote Ted Turner's network. Ruggiano swings and misses. And there are two outs. That lasted as long as Ted Turner's managerial career, too. That's right. <laughs> one game. <laughs> Next Coral Light Marlins watch party is coming up on Friday at David Buster's at Dolphin Mall. Marlins and Mets at 710. 
win prizes, meet Billy and the energy team, and take advantage of great food and Corona Light specials throughout the game. For more info, go to Marlins.com. Austin Kearns now. Kearns getting the start in right field. Again, Giancarlo Stanton not in the lineup and not available, according to Ozzie Guillen, until Friday. Of course, Friday night, the Marlins will be at City Field to take on the Mets. Liner right to short. Prado is there. And the Marlins are down in order. Mahalam has retired all six that he's faced. by Toyota. Visit your local Toyota dealer today for great deals on Toyota vehicles. Toyota moving forward by AT&T, the nation's largest 4G network. AT&T, rethink possible. And by Papa John's. For $10, get Papa John's Buffalo Chicken Pizza. Or for $2 more, get any large pizza. Nathan Evaldi and Paul Mahalam have both looked sharp in their two innings of work. Nivaldi gave up a single to Chipper Jones. He was erased on a double play ball. And the young right hander out of Alvin, Texas, Nolan Ryan's hometown, has struck out two and walked anybody. Gets Brian McCann, Jose Costanza, and Paul Mahalam. Yeah, the interesting thing about McCann with the uh, little tweak behind the knee, the hamstring, it bothers him more in his uh, uh, catching crouch than it does hitting. On an email and a Twitter Tuesday, Joe Benedetto tweets, huge Braves fan here. Love you guys. Who do you think gets the game one start? Whether it's game one of the ALCS with, or excuse me, the ALDS. Let me stop. To right and back up. Whether it's game one of the NLDS if they catch the Nationals or whether it's the one game play in, who would you give the start to, Hudson or Medlin? I tell you right now, I'd have to give it to Chris Medlin. Ground ball, right field, base hit. That would be surprising if, if the Braves found themselves in the ALDS, wouldn't it? <laughs> Here's Tico's. <laughs> Standings. Just, you rewound that very well, though. <laughs> un unfortunate, it's live television. All right, Tico standings in the East. Now, the word at the top of the standings is rain. The Nationals and Dodgers were rained out, so the Braves can climb to four and a half back with a win tonight. And and that makes the uh, the Nationals and Dodgers. They'll they'll have a double header tomorrow in D.C. A lot of postponements. Phillies rained out against the Mets, City Field. Toronto rained out Yankee Stadium. No rain here. You know what? Open. And even if it does, we'll just close it. That's why we had a tweet earlier. Why is the roof open? Well, no big deal. We'll just close it if it starts to rain. 
Why is it open? Because they can. Kind of nice. Yeah. There's actually a, a breeze that's coming in and around the ballpark, which uh, makes it rather pleasant. John Buck out for a quick visit with Evaldi. Constanza, lots of speed, slap hitter, and a guy that, uh, had we polled last year, may have made the uh, Marlin killer team for 2011. Tomorrow, we'll update the uh, most recent Marlin killer squad, guys that uh, through history and over the last couple of years, have hit quite well. I wouldn't be surprised to see a Martin Prado or a Chipper Jones on there. You know we'll see Matt Diaz on there. That's a good call. Here's the 3-1. Slow tapper. Solano goes to get it. Swipe tag missed. Gets the out at first. Boy, he hustled and tried for it. And almost got it. McCann just scooted past him. Yeah, that was a, a good effort by Donovan Solano. Here comes Ozzie Guillen out to talk. Because you're also, if you're McCann, you're walking that fine line of interfering with the fielder as well. Now, here's why Ozzie's coming out. Remember last night when C.B. Buckner hammered the call at first? It looked like uh, that he may have clipped his pants. But here's why Ozzie's coming out. An umpire on a play like this can get help from the other umpires. He can get help. The other guys have a little different angle, so I think that's what they'll they'll talk about. It was a great effort by Solano, and consider the fact that Constanza has great speed too coming up the line. Right. Looks like he gets him on the back lay, but it's hard to tell. And so Ozzy is asking that the other umpires if they saw it if they had a better look to help with the call because that is legal and uh, a manager can ask that Ozzy's not real happy so you you, you know what the results going to be it's going to stay the same but I thought a good effort to go out there and try to get that call because it's close watch this leg now yeah it's like the pants kind of yeah they kind of flutter a little bit left calf now for in, in all fairness to the umpires tough call we watched it in super slow-mo yeah from eight angles and then we saw the fabric move and they they watch it in real time it does put McCann in scoring position with one out and here's Mahalam uh, you have have the pitcher up so a little bit of a break for Evaldi you've got the pitcher up and McCann even with uh, healthy hamstrings does not run well. Marlins chick 87 friend of yours. No I think we've gotten uh, tweets from her before though. <laughs> one one to Mahalam. What are your thoughts on next year's schedule? She is excited to see the Tiger series. She's going to have to wait until the end of the year to see the Tiger series. Yes, yeah, how about that? The last three games of the year next year are against the Detroit Tigers right here. Mahalam way out in front. Evaldi takes care of business. Now he's got to get born out. You know, you and I were talking about the schedule, Rich, and, and I know you like the fact that in some of the interleague stuff, it's it's mixed in with National League play in similar areas, so you're not uh, zigzagging across the country. Amen. Yeah. And, and and that's because obviously interleague play is interspersed throughout your schedule. There has to be an interleague game every day of the year because. 15 teams in the American League, 15 teams in the National League. It's been a rough series for Michael Bourne. 0 for 6 with four strikeouts. And it even got rougher on that uh, little chopper to second. It, it actually showed that he beat out, would have been a base hit, but he was called out by C.B. Buckner. Rolls this one to second. 
And this play's not even close. Solano throws him out. And Evaldi's thrown three scoreless at the Braves. En español es presentado en SAP por Coventry Healthcare of Florida. On an email Twitter Tuesday, Rich Waltz along with Tommy Hutton. Allison Williams is with us. Craig Minervini, Jeff Conine, Frank Fort will be appearing after the ball game on the latest edition of Inside the Marlins. Let's check in with Craig Minervini. Craig? I'm with Claude Delorme, the executive vice president of operation and events for the Marlins. They made the decision today to open the roof. I think uh, when you walk around, people are happy to see it open. Yeah, overall, uh, very favorable comments. And, uh, you know, this is our eighth time, uh, eighth time this season that we've opened it. So hopefully we'll have a few more opportunities to do it in, the, in our last home stand as well. What made you lean toward opening it today, Claude? Well, the weather was, there was a 30% chance of rain. There was only a seven, uh, the wind, uh, wind was only going seven miles an hour at game time. The weather was uh, about 82, 83 degrees. And we felt the conditions uh, warranted uh, the opportunity to open it. Yeah. And then we've been getting a lot of requests to do it, so uh, we wanted to take advantage of, the, of it tonight and give our fans the opportunity to play with the wall and the roof open. In the event a rain shower should pop up, which could happen, you close the roof. Is it, is it a big deal? Yeah, it's already in position. It's ready to go. So it would take us. Normally, the roof takes 13 to 14 minutes to close. And the way we position it tonight, it would probably take us about seven to eight minutes to close the entire roof. So we would close that and then close the wall if if uh, we we uh, we got any un unexpected rain. What are people telling you as you walk around, Claude? No, they're very happy. They're coming up to us and thanking us for for doing this. And you know, they they love the comfort of air conditioned space. And so a lot of our fans, uh, you know, we've you know love the setting that we're in. Especially with the heat and whatnot, yeah. but uh, tonight I think they, they they appreciate the conditions and uh, recognize that uh, this is a perfect, uh, pretty well a perfect setting for yeah. us to play in these in these conditions. I don't want to say perfect storm, perfect setting. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right, everybody's so antsy about the weather and they're checking the. There is some lightning way out there beyond, but it looks pretty good for the game, at least so far, guys. Back to you. All right. Thank you, Craig. Right into the Coventry Healthcare scouting report on Paul Mahala. Pretty good command. He's shown that so far. 12 6 curve. Haven't had a chance to see that uh, slide step. He doesn't take a whole lot of time to deliver to the plate when he has a runner at first base. John Buck up there right now with the count two and two. Gil Velasquez and then Nathan Evaldi against Mahala. And if the read is right, that you can tell right away if Mahala has it or doesn't have it, he has it tonight. But so does Nathan Evaldi. Mahala misses in. And they count full at three and two. We're taking as many of your emails and tweets as we can get in. We had a question about the schedule, a comment about the schedule. The three two. 
Buckets a high fly ball, deep center field. Back goes board, and he leaps, and he can't get it. And down he goes, and up to the races goes Buck. He's going to get a triple. How about that for John Buck, his first triple of the season. And I'm going to look back quickly. I guarantee John Buck hasn't had a whole lot of triples. Ah, he's had eight. That's number nine in his career. Normally, Michael Bourne makes this play. He's got the speed. He's got the ability out there. But again, with the roof open, you never know. It's a little different feeling out there. So John Buck motors around, gets himself a, a triple. He's at third with nobody out. And Gil Velasquez comes up with the middle infield back. The corner's in. And a chance to get on the board first against Mahalo. Velasquez goes after the first pitch. Off speed. And it's 0-1. Velasquez second stint with Miami. He had a very good year in Triple A at over 300. And Mahalam has thrown him a pair of off speed pitches and is out in front. Cholula Hot Sauce Spotlight player, born in Los Angeles. 15 minor league seasons, cups of coffee along the way with a few major league clubs. Yeah, the Angels, the Red Sox. And you see 312 in 110 games with New Orleans. The Mahalam went soft to the first two. That's his fastball that tails away. I think it's interesting. A, a different part of the batting order. You might see their infield back. But down this part of the order. Freddie Gonzalez brings his infield in. Well they were back until two strikes. Freddie brought him in once he got the two strikes. And then Mahalam. Goes back to that change up and it's two and two and with nobody out this would not be a, a contact play where John Buck would be going on contact. There's Freddie. Breaking ball Velasquez. Stays alive. Two and two. Marlins first venture into interleague next year on the schedule is in April, a two-game series in Minnesota. That'll be a uh, that'll be a sweater vest trip. I have a feeling. <laughs> April in Minnesota. You think? <laughs> Four games in Cincinnati and then two in Minnesota on that trip. Vasquez <laughs> called strike three. CB Buckner rings him up. And there's one out, and here comes Evaldi. And he went soft with some early changeups and then threw that fastball there. One thing we've seen, uh, just a little bit we've seen of Nate Evaldi, he swings the bat all right. So he has a chance against this left hander to make contact and see how he approaches this. Infield in from the get go. Yeah, for pitchers, Mahalam's fastball is batting practice speed. That's uh, right up everyone's alley. But of course, Mahalam has a very good changeup, and he just showed him the breaking ball. Marlins go to Chicago to play the White Sox next year. Ball the out in front. It's 0-2 on oh, that trip. Be a little homecoming for uh, Ozzy Guillen. They go to Chicago. And then go to St. Pete to play the Rays. And the Marlins get the Rays for four straight. Two in St. Pete, two here in Miami. 0 2. And Evaldi strikes out. So instead of six games against the Rays, the Marlins and Rays will match up four times. With a Chevron ticket Wednesday, you can fill up with eight gallons or more of Chevron with Tecron gasoline and receive a voucher for a 50% discount off tickets and select sections for any remaining Marlins Wednesday home game. Stop in at a participating Chevron station today or tonight or tomorrow morning for more details because you want to be here tomorrow night with those Chevron voucher slash coupons. It's Jose Reyes bobblehead night tomorrow night. 
It's also a great pitching matchup of the aforementioned Chris Medlin and Josh Johnson and the Marlins will be honoring Chipper Jones tomorrow night. Great night. Gorky's Hernandez. Gorky's lines it into right field and the Marlins pick up the run. Another solid at bat from Hernandez who looked good at the plate last night. Mahalam thought he was out of it. He had struck out Velasquez and Evaldi after Buck's triple. That's the kind of approach you love to see a right hander take. Against the left hander who's not overpowering stay back. If you get that pitch out over the plate. Drive it the other way. Big two out base hit by Gorky Hernandez. Now you've got Solano. Tommy your scouting report Mahalam. With that slide step and yeah, tough to steal against. Yeah, Gorky's at first who has four stolen bases Solano. Bounced to second back in the first. To right Hayward. Not a good approach though. And makes the catch Marlins get that run. John Buck with a triple. And a two out single by Gorky's Hernandez. Over the Braves. Flip the phone. AT&T trivia. Who holds the Braves record for home runs in a season. Versus. The Marlins. Well you would think the go to guy would be Chipper Jones. And you get the buzzer right. Yeah, evidently the not. Martin Prado and if all the misses away Prado Jason Hayward Chipper Jones who are some other brave sluggers then David Justice. Oh, Javi Lopez. Now how come I got the buzzer for Javi Lopez you got nothing for David Justice. <laughs> you happy. <laughs> See what you've done. <laughs> Proud of yourself. Here's the two one. <laughs> it's taken inside. But Brian McCann. That's not a bad call. Well, Martin Prado walks. Evaldi had not walked anyone his first three innings. 
And now he's going to have to face the teeth of the order with Prado at first base. First comes Hayward, then comes Chipper. This is where it really gets tough. All the left handed hitters coming up Hayward, Chipper, Freeman. And Hayward takes a strike. Popped up. Buck tosses the helmet to the screen. And did he catch it cleanly? Yes, he did. That's not an easy thing to do if it touches the screen at all. It's no catch, but Buck somehow got it before it hit the screen. There's a, a great example of John Buck making a nice adjustment with the roof open. The ball may not carry quite that way with the roof closed. And he also, hey, look at snow cone. You don't see too many snow cones with a catcher's mitt. And he was able to keep his concentration and put it away. Had a, a, a tweet about John Buck from uh, CM Coop 77 wanting to know with the way John Buck's been hitting lately. Do you think he'll be back next year? I hope so. Carl from Cape Coral. Oh, I thought that was the former Surgeon General. <laughs> I think there's a good chance. I, I think boy, a lot of it and, and it's not easy. Uh, John Buck's 31. It's not easy for him to turn over his job he still wants his job as an everyday catcher but we've seen the uh, maturation of uh, Rob Brantley and his improvement the two of them make a good mix it's a good mix to have left handed bat right handed bat we'll have to see how that plays out NWF Marlin how did and when did the bear hug on Joey Cora start? I noticed that Buck hugged him coming in. I think that was a Carlos Lee thing that started. And now everybody is, is kind of into it. Three one pitch. Chipper lines at center field hits it well back goes Gorky's is there and he makes the catch. Two outs here comes Freddie Freeman. We will ask Joey Cora who the first Marlin was to hug him. Put that on our list. Of That's our list do. of questions for tomorrow. Kid from Philly. Have you guys ever caught a foul ball cleanly? I caught one in Philly hit by Barry foot. I called it my football. <laughs> the only time. That I've ever caught a foul ball cleanly was uh, I was working with the uh, Toronto Blue Jays broadcasting a game at Old Memorial Stadium in Baltimore. Not only did I catch it I got the give that fan a contract from Rex Barney from Rex Barney <laughs> longtime PA announcer. That's a nice touch. Anthony Valdi works around that leadoff walk and it's one nothing Miami.
Fox Sports Florida is brought to you by Nissan. Get to Nissan for the biggest savings under the sun at Nissan's summer saving days. Visit ChooseNissan.com. By Coventry Healthcare of Florida, lining the way to better health. And by Bennett Auto Supply, our prices bring you in and our people bring you back. That would be an open roof over the plaza area. The entrance to Marlins Park. Roof open tonight. Marlins up tonight. Paul Mahalam back to work. Bottom of the fourth. one nothing. Two hits apiece for the Marlins and the Braves. And Mahalam gets a strike on Reyes with Carlos Lee and Justin Ruggiano right behind. You know, a number of uh, Marlins, Jose Reyes certainly being one, have seen Paul Mahalam, who for six years was in the Pirates rotation. Got hurt a lot with not a whole lot of support. Bad ball clubs at times. But was in that rotation for six years. There were a trio of lefties. With Pittsburgh at the time and the Pirates were were as you pointed out not very good. And all those guys. Are pitching in other places. Tom Gorzolani. Reyes golfs that one. Mahalam here with Atlanta. Why am I blanking on the third guy? Well, you're blanking on the third guy because I was blanking on the third guy. I was going to throw out Gorzolani because I couldn't think of that third guy. And then you threw out Gorzolani. <laughs> one, two. That one rolled foul. Well, that's why we have emails and tweets. Someone out there. Someone will help us out. Twitterverse. Who was that? <laughs> Our director, Jim Hawley, is of no help. No, he, he's throwing out names of right handers. He just said Kip Wells. Yeah. That's an embarrassment. <laughs> Here's the one, too. He's still shattered at that 49ers Lions game. That's true. Reyes knocks it to the wall and left. And Jose Reyes has got a leadoff double here in the fourth. That's right. John Chimchuk, our statistician. Zach Duke. Let's flip the phone. I don't think we came close on this. Ron Gant. Good guess. Ah, oh, Francoeur. Frenchy. In 06. Oh. Jeff Francoeur. Carlos Lee up. Reyes at second, and Lee takes down low. Zach Duke is the other. Well, the Marlins capitalized, uh, albeit it took uh, a couple of outs, took a big two out base hit on a leadoff triple. Now let's see if they can capitalize on this leadoff two base hit. Hey. 1 0 pitch for a strike. Boy, 35 doubles now for Jose Reyes. Along with 11 triples and 11 home runs. Lee, a little bloop out to short. Prado makes the catch. Reyes retreats. Here comes Ruggiano. It's an email Twitter Tuesday tonight. If you'd like to email us, go to. Uh, FoxSportsFlorida.com. Click on the Marlins logo. That gets you to the Marlins page. There's a big sign that says Game Connect. Once you get there, scroll down, ask the broadcast. It's a four-part internet task for you. Or at FS Marlins on Twitter. Rowdy from Green Acres. With the aid of the crack staff. In parentheses, shout out to the viewers in Gainesville. We're hoping for a little trivia help. Has there ever been a hitter who was only a single shy of the cycle, got it, but stretched it to a double? <laughs> P.S. We're doing sit ups for you, Tommy, as we read the email. And well, you should. Um, I think there have been guys who have had the uh, uh, the double, triple, and home run out of the way and, and, and hit another double. And certainly don't stay at first base just to get the cycle. And I think there have also been guys who've 
have the uh, single double and home run and maybe have hit a borderline gapper and just keep going and hope they end up at third. One one pitch. Ruggiano lifts it down the line and into the corner. Reyes will tag. Hayward at the track makes the catch. And Reyes trots into third, but Mahalam's got a couple of outs. Here comes Kearns. Kearns lined to short his first time up. Got a lot of uh, personnel questions. Brett wants to know where the Marlins try to get to play second base next year. I think they have to make that decision. If they come to a an agreement that Donovan Solano is not an everyday player, but I think it's going to be a tough decision. He's, he's making it a tough decision, which is what you want. Yeah. Used to hear managers in spring training. They tell you that make it tough for me to send you back to the minor leagues. And if Emilio Bonifacio is in center field. You might see the ball club if Solano is their guy still bring a veteran to spring training just in case. 2 0. Kearns Three. takes a strike. Dave wants to know who will play first base if Carlos Lee is not re signed. Right now, it all points head towards Logan Morrison. So if you missed it earlier tonight, today was named the Marlins nominee for the Roberto Clemente Award. BBNT Fox tracks three and one coming to Austin Kearns with Buck on deck. Looked like a either a slider or a cutter. Probably a cutter. That's a, a pitch that he's been using. Mahalam out of Germantown, Tennessee. Same hometown as Matt Keane. Chopper towards Chipper. Backhands throws. And it's picked by Freeman. Terrific play on both corners. Even more so by Freddie Freeman, who saved. Chipper Jones and saved the run in the process. Time now for the Jester Van Keep Your Edge Spotlight. Martin Prado leading the National League in multi hit games at 55. Melky Cabrera with 52. He certainly 
has given the Braves an edge, has Prado. You can keep your edge with Jester Man mustache and beard. The roof is closing. Rain is actually falling in Marlins Park. A little gentle sprinkle. But have no fear. Seven, eight minutes, as uh, Claude Delorme told us. Everything will be nice and cozy. There you go. I mean, if you've got a roof, well, why not use it like this? If it's nice or it starts out to be nice? I think there are a couple of reasons. I think sometimes you you have it closed just so people, as they plan to come to a game, know how to dress. They know how to dress. They know it's going to be a constant climate. But a few people just trying to get out of the rain that's coming down now, but Roof's about halfway closed. Hugo takes a breaking ball and hits it out in the right field. How about that? Just following the ball, catching that high fly ball as the roof gently closes <laughs> above. Hey, look at he's encouraged <laughs> to talk yeah. about it. Now, you know, a lot of fans are running for. I can't believe Allison. Come on. You, you know, she can't get the hair wet. I thought she was a gamer, too. Now had it styled. The Contessa had it ready to go for email and Twitter Tuesday. You've all the a big breaking ball misses to McCann. Good news tonight, Rich. We talked about Evaldi's troubles uh, against lefties. Lefties tonight, two for 11 against Nathan Evaldi. Good change up there. Crack staff question. It's from Hunter in uh, Athens, Alabama. Roller out to second. Solano has it. Craig Kimbrell currently has more saves than hits allowed. Has anyone ever finished the year with that accomplishment? Yeah, I, the the one name that pops up that you'd have to uh, you'd have to check on because he had such an incredible run is Eric Gagne when he was at the top of his game. So more saves than hits allowed. I'm on it. I just saw Eric Gagne's name in either an email or a tweet. Yeah, about one of the uh, World Baseball Classic teams. I think he's going to be the pitching coach. I think for Team Italy. I thought Gagne was Canadian. Maybe he's hooking up with Mike Piazza. Oh, that that was old old hat for Gagne. In in 03, Gagne had 55 saves, allowed 37 hits. But you know what? That was the only year he did it. He was close in 02. But he did do it in 03. Oh, they can stands up there in a breaking ball. Evaldi off of his bare hand. That's never a good thing. And Constanza is aboard. Evaldi will get a visit from uh, his pitching coach, his manager, and a trainer. Now, watch that right hand. It's totally a reaction. Yeah, you hope it's just a, caught a finger and didn't do any damage. It doesn't look like it did the way he goes after the ball. And Constanza with his speed, no problem with the infield base hit. Which does give us a, a little time. Got a, a tweet from Eric watching from Baltimore. So at least Eric later on can watch his Orioles there in Seattle. Huge Fist fan wants to know why Carlos Lee has lost his power the last couple of years. You know, a lot of that has to do with your lower half and your drive and you know when you get a little bit older uh, sometimes you lose some of that strength in that area. But still talking to Carlos in the clubhouse today I told him you know we used to only get a chance to see him about six games a year and how enjoyable it was 
to watch him day in and day out and his approach and the kind of a bats he gives you all the time. Everyone's happy with the uh, Evaldi's quick recovery from that. See, roof is closed. Everybody's fine. I like the fact that they're leaving the uh, rolling windows open. I'm with you. Kind of keeps a little breeze going. Mahalam's up. Those would be the rolling windows, and they are open. You can see the downtown skyline. Very cool look. From inside Marlins Park. We were talking last night and. I hate to leave this name out. We're talking about it in the American League possible managers of the year. We mentioned Buck Showalter. We mentioned Bob Melvin. The guy I left out was Robin Ventura. And the Chicago White Sox who lead the uh, AL West right now. Duly noted. Pitch misses inside. It was Bren 3687 that tweeted. Have you seen the rosters for the Israeli team? Osmus and Sean Green on the coaching staff. Eric Gagne, pitching coach for Italy. That's Brennan in Palm Beach Gardens. Up my way, Brennan. That's right. That's uh, that starts this week. First of actually, there's two qualifiers going on. One in Jupiter, Florida, and the other. In Germany, France, Israel, South Africa, and Spain will square off at Roger Dean Stadium. Solano's had a few ground balls his way. He flips on over to first, and Mahalam is out, and Evaldi has five very solid innings in the books. In March of 2013, second round action is here at Marlins Park. And we told you the qualifiers start tomorrow in Germany and right up the road, Jupiter, Florida. If you want to see some international baseball, get out. The four teams, France, Israel, South Africa, and Spain. In Germany, Canada, the Czech Republic, the host team, Germany, and Great Britain will also be trying to qualify for the World Baseball Classic. The winners of each qualifier will advance to compete next March in the World Baseball Classic tournament. There are two other qualifiers. One is in El Caballo's backyard, Panama City. Panama, Nicaragua, Colombia, and Brazil. And the other is in Taiwan. Chinese Taipei, New Zealand, the Philippines, and Thailand. John Buck against Paul Mahalam. Look at that. 
against Mahala. Four for seven, a homer and a triple. Now we've been talking too about the uh, resurgence of of John Buck. Around 290 now since August 1st. A couple of home runs at triple, eight doubles in that time period. Buck takes outside. And Mahalam has fallen behind him 3 0. Change up for a strike. Bucks aboard. Lead off walk. Marlins and Phillies on a Saturday spectacular, September 29th. They arrive early for a player autograph session and a party on the West Plaza with music, entertainment, and more after the game. Enjoy a fireworks spectacular and concert on the plaza. Go to Marlins.com for tickets. I like this tweet from South Dakota. Coach Willie. Liner, Ugla, double play. Velasquez hit it hard. Ugla made a quick throw to first, and just like that, Mahalam has a couple outs in the fifth. You know, you're you're the runner at first, John Buck. You're, you're trying to get as good a jump and lead, and you take that one step, and you're just nailed because that ball was hit so hard. But uh, Coach Willie from South Dakota, Rich, says, who do you see? In center field next season, Ruggiano, Bonifacio, Gorky Hernandez, Josh Hamilton, <laughs> or anybody else. Love your broadcast. So we love you, Coach Willie, in South Dakota. I think you and I feel that, that Bonifacio will be there in center field. Of course, that means staying healthy all spring. Yes. Having a solid spring. But Ruggiano certainly could play there. Gorky's Hernandez, I think the Marlins need to see a little more of him. But that's not to say that if Gorky's Hernandez has a uh, really good spring training, he has a shot to make the club. Gorky's has those things that make you watch him. You know, he has the speed, the the ability to play a, a terrific center field. But he's hitting 178 coming into the game. You want to see more. You want to see consistency. Yavaldi up there. Mahalam's 2 1. And he sprays it out towards Ugla. And a 10 pitch inning for Paul Mahalam. To the sixth. 1 0. Miami.
A little road trip on to New York. Marlins Mets are a dicky on the weekend. And after the fish are in New York at City Field, ah, the drum line comes out. And the Braves will be thumping. They'll be trying to run down the Nationals. The Marlins will be there next week. You'll be there next week with Fox Sports Florida. Mets Friday through Sunday, Braves Tuesday through Thursday. Roof is closed now. A little bit of a, a rain shower arrived in Miami. The roof zipped right closed. Nathan Evaldi, who has thrown 70 pitches, Paul Mahalam has thrown 68. Very evenly matched, these two guys have been. Michael Bourne, top of the order, runs the bunt. By the way, I like when our, our crack staff out there helps us out. You know the question about Kimbrel. More saves than hits allowed. And we talked about Eric Gagne. Mariano Rivera. Trevor Hoffman. Dennis Eckersley. Armando Benitez. All accomplished that. Marlins would like to get through this night without seeing Kimbrel. Staring at him from 60 feet away. Born bounces out. Magic Mike Pyro. Is USA not in the World Baseball Classic? Yes, the United States is in the World Baseball Classic. The other countries are playing in qualifiers to get into the World Baseball Classic tournament next March. Based on past performance. Some teams will have to qualify this year. I like the uh, tweet that that we just got from uh, Allison W. <laughs> <laughs> Saying she's having uh, issues with the crack staff. Reyes spinning, throwing. Oh yeah, he got him. My hair goes whack in the rain. <laughs> it ain't pretty. <laughs> this is pretty. Great job by Jose Reyes. Pick. The spin move, and then he shows off that strong arm. We've seen that strong arm all year. Evaldi has the first two outs of this sixth inning, and here is Jason Hayward, who has bounced out, popped out. Braves have three hits, Marlins have three hits. Hey, we're trying to cross up the. It's a fair ball. Cross up the shift. That one just either bouncing over the bag or catching the bag. A hard push bunt by Jason Hayward, and he's aboard with Chipper Jones coming up. Not too bad of a play. There's some that'll question that because Hayward, with 27 home runs, could tie it with one swing. Yep, hit the bag. Hit the bag, but he does get Chipper Jones to the plate. Chippers hit the ball hard in both of his ABs. Line drive single to left. That was in the second. And a deep line drive out to center in the fourth. Boy, so many uh, statistical groups. Chipper is uh, in near the top. Only Eddie Murray has more RBIs as a switch hitter. Chipper more than Mickey Mantle. More impressive to me than that. Most RBIs ever by a third baseman. Mm -hmm. And that's Chipper. Number one, George Brett, Mike Schmidt, Eddie Matthews behind him. Yeah, that's a, that's a heck of a list. And he's done a lot of damage against the Marlins. Look at his career, all time rankings against the Marlins, 243 games, first in all those categories. Tomorrow we'll have that new Marlin killer list up. 2 1 pitch. And it's in. Jose Reyes bobblehead night. 
And a very good pitching matchup. Again, it's Josh Johnson and Chris Medlin. Josh Johnson making his 30th start of the season tomorrow night. Chipper walks. So Hayward did start something with the bunt. Now Freeman comes up. Did you realize, in just in doing a little homework on Medlin for tomorrow night, the Braves have won Medlin's last 20 starts going back to before Tommy John surgery in 2010. And that is the franchise record. John Smoltz, 15 straight starts in which his team won, was the old one. That was in 96. And the last major league team to win at least 20 starts by one pitcher was the 2001 New York Yankees, Roger Clemens. Wow. And, and you know, Medlin's been used the last few years out of the bullpen and a starter. But his last loss as a starter was in May of 09. So that's who goes up against JJ tomorrow night. Freeman swings and misses. Now Evaldi trying to pitch around a, a bunt single and a two out walk. There's Chipper. Hayward out there at second. And Evaldi right out in front. 0 and 2. I like that. After the the bunt and then you know not really making great pitches to Chipper Jones missing. Getting a little jam. He came right after Freeman and has gotten ahead 0 and 2 in a hurry. That one got away from me. Where did that where did that show up on the uh, Fox tracks radar. Did it register. <laughs> wow. Look at that. <laughs> In the very corner. Freeman to right. It's well hit. Kearns has room. And he makes the catch. And you've all these strands those two runners bottom of the six. In Miami one nothing Marlins. American Forces Network broadcasting to U.S. Armed Forces serving in 175 countries and aboard ships at sea. They're watching around the world in Iraq, Germany, Italy, Southwest Asia, South Korea, and Japan. So welcome aboard. Glad you're with us. Marlins Park in Miami. Jam Lexus resets the game. The roof was open when things started. Little sprinkles around the area. The roof closed quickly in about eight minutes. And the Marlins got their run in the bottom of the third. Gorky's Hernandez driving in John Buck. Nathan Evaldi has been outstanding. Paul Mahal has been really good as well. And we arrive here in the bottom of the six. So wherever you're watching, welcome to the National League East, where the Braves are trying to run down the uh, Washington Nationals. 
the Nationals rained out tonight as they began or attempted to begin their series against the Dodgers. And so what's at stake for the Braves here, if Atlanta can win this game, they'll be four and a half out of first place. They already have a seven and a half game lead from that first wild card spot to the second. Yeah, that was supposed to be a Aaron Harang Jordan Zimmerman ball game. And now they'll play two. Here is Gorky's Hernandez. By the way, that was an interesting graphic in, in the summary of the game here tonight. We've talked about Evaldi. Four for 17 are the left handed bats from the Braves. That means he hasn't allowed a hit to a right handed batter in the Atlanta lineup. We've got an email from Allen who says he's with his buddy Dave at the game and have completed a road trip to all 30 major league parks. Out in section 25 row 7 seats 7 and 8 started in Fenway in 05. Marlins Park the last one we celebrated with a taste of Miami. Food and a trip to the Clevelander now what what a way to celebrate well, and you know with the other thing think about it they've been here on a night where they've seen the roof open and they've had the roof closed and I did not celebrate at the Clevelander but I celebrated at the taste of Miami <laughs> before the game. Hernandez steps out. There was actually some lightning out there in downtown Miami that lit up the rolling windows. That's why Gorky's stepped out. Mahal and trying to catch the corner. Three and two. <laughs> that one did catch the corner. And I think Craig has caught up with our guys, Alan and Dave. Craig? Yes, thank you very much, Rich. Here's the, the fancy sign that you did today 30 stadiums complete. That's correct. 30 stadiums started in Boston and ended right here in Miami tonight. Flip that around so we could see the uh, uh, the other way here. It took them, uh, we've seen some fans do it in a, in a year. They tried it. You it took you 2,690 days to do it. That's correct. We started in, uh, or I started in May of 05, and then I met Dave in. Uh, March of 06, and we've uh, been doing the stadium. Here's together. Dave over here. How are we doing? Yeah, now wait, you met you met on a, on a baseball road trip? Uh, we met in Boston. We actually used to work together, so shared uh, love of baseball, and uh, just wanted to uh, join in all the fun. Uh, what would you think? Now you've been to all these ballparks. I don't know if you could see him. Got a little spelling issue here on Anaheim. I don't know if you could see A N A H. You lose two points for that. But overall, what do you think about Marlins Park? Marlins Park is uh, is awesome. It's it's a lot like Houston, um, in that it's it's nice and compact. Uh, it both of them sit right downtown, and uh, both the lids close when it starts raining. Yeah, that's right. Did you guys get a little wet? Yeah, it was great. We got we got hit for about ten minutes, and then it uh, roof closed, and uh, it's been great. Just a little sprinkle. Tell me what you thought. Think of the ballpark here, seeing it. Uh, what's your observations? What do you like about it? Much better than than on TV. Doesn't do it justice. So. Nice park, very accessible. I've, I've, I've walked all the decks. It's uh, it's great. Now they haven't been to New City Field yet because you were at Shea. If I had it in a quick synopsis, if you look at all the other parks, forget this one now. Which one did you like the best? Other, or are you going to include this if you want? Other than this one? Yeah. For me, it's Camden Yards in Baltimore. Okay. And what about you? AT&T Park in San Francisco. All right. Just right on that bay. Just amazing. All right, guys. That's some good parks there. I think they're they're on our list too. Both of those, and of course, I think most of us are. We love the the old Wrigley and Fenway Park as well. Can't go wrong with Fenway Park is number one, and Wrigley is number two. All right, guys, that's uh, two buddies who have been a lot of places and seen a lot of baseball. Donovan Solano strikes out. Paul Mahalam has struck out the first two hitters, the bottom of the sixth. Mahalam and Nathan Evaldi have been dynamite tonight in a one nothing game. The final Jiffy Loop Friday Night Live is coming up on the 28th. Marlins and Phillies at 7:10 after the game head to the West Plaza for a live concert presented by Heineken Light. Lock in your tickets for the final Friday Night Live. Call 1-877 Marlins or go to marlins.com. Reyes has bounced out and doubled. A buck triple, a Reyes double, a Gorky's Hernandez single. Those are the hits for the Marlins. 
Hernandez single knocked in Buck who's triple open the third. Chopper to chipper and he throws him out at first the one two three inning for Mahalo. Jose will be there for Jose Reyes bobblehead night. And what fun we'll have. Jose Reyes bobblehead night tomorrow night and a terrific pitching matchup. Chris Medlin, who is probably the Cy Young Award winner of the second half in the National League, and Josh Johnson. And our little friend, little Jose, will be spinning some tunes at the Cleveland. Working it, doing it. That would be big Jose. Here's Dan Ugla. And Ugla takes strike one. Brian McCann, Jose Constanza. In the seventh, Nathan Evaldi has thrown 86 pitches, 53 of them strikes. Well, he's had a, a nice uh, mix of his pitches tonight. You know, he had seven innings against the Mets at the end of August, but he gave up four hits and three runs. This performance, he, he's been around the plate. He's walked just a couple. His slider is curveball. And the fastball is always explosive. Ugla, big swing and a miss. Ugla got a hold of one last night. And as Tommy described it before the ball game, buggy whipped one. That's what he did. To yeah. left field. A three run homer. <laughs> ah, that would be strike three called. Ugly Boy, goes down. 98 miles an hour. He just snuck that fastball right on past a, an excellent fastball hitter. Wow. That one pulled foul. Not Sports Center Miami tweets. Gorky's Hernandez is the funnest name to say in baseball. Am I right or am I right? You know, you were right until D.D. Gregorius came through here <laughs> <laughs> with the Cincinnati Reds. I think D.D. Gregorius is a little more fun to say than Gorky's Hernandez, but it's they're both enjoyable. They are both enjoyable and enjoyable to watch. They also had not enough camera 12 tonight on this Twitter Tuesday. Uh, it's a one nothing game. <laughs> it's a good point. I don't think we're able to break the seal on camera 12 in one nothing games. It's not quite a 10 run real uh, camera but.
with all the. 0 2 on Brian McCann. And 98 again. That's the impressive thing tonight with Nathan Evaldi. Here we are in the seventh inning. He's uh, over 90 pitches. And he's touched 98 a couple of times this inning. Well, he's working quickly, too. Change up. This is out. Peter Moylan, who has been battling uh, injuries, has himself back in the big leagues. The Australian. Fish at bat watching the Marlins game from Seoul, South Korea, where it's already Wednesday morning. Liner to right, and Kearns is there and he makes the catch. And so Evaldi gets Ugla and McCann, and here comes Constanza. Marlins fans 7 to 7. What kind of things will the Marlins do to preserve the grass and field. During the offseason I think during the offseason there. There are going to be some uh, international soccer matches. Yeah and I think there'll be some uh, a little bit of a makeover there'll be some changes but th they have uh, lots of plans trust me to, to make this as uh, pristine as possible. And I think we've seen. The efforts just as this year has gone by it's it's not where the ball club really wants to be yet but we've seen it get better just about every homestand. One one pitch to Constanza and he hits a fly ball to the left it's carrying. Ruggiano is there, makes the catch. Who is it that ordered some camera 12? Ah, well, some for the kids. All right, there you go. How about if we give you a little John Buck on a high fastball that he takes to straightaway center field out of the reach of Michael Bourne. Then a big two out base hit from Gorky's Hernandez stayed back on that ball well to drive in Buck and you know what that's the only run of this ball game. The pitching has been tremendous on both sides especially for Nathan Evaldi who's given up four hits no runs. Mahalam's been equally as tough. He's given up just that one run and three hits. Marlins would love to add some insurance. Mahalam facing Carlos Lee. And a changeup misses down low. Marlins' last hit against Mahalam was Reyes' double to lead off the fourth. Mahalam looking for his 13th win of the season. As bad as the Cubs were, Mahalam was outstanding with the Cubs. 
He was nine and six with a 3.74 ERA. And what got him shipped out of town into a contender were his last seven appearances as a Cub. He was five and zero, oh and his ERA was 1.00. And as a Cub, he beat Mark Burley in the fish four to two on July 19th. Yeah, that was that eight inning performance where he gave up just one run. So he's given up two runs over 14 innings against the fish this year. And Mahala misses outside. Lee pulls that one. And it's foul. Braves pen. You saw Moylan has been up. Luis Avalon, whom the Marlins saw last night, is up as well. Lee drills one foul and up near. The taste of Miami, it bangs off the second deck. He's uh, Lee is happy to pound away and Mahalam. Just feeding him off speed pitches. No drop call, no drop ball. And kept the conversation going. That's two and two. And Lee calls the timeout. Born out there, he makes the catch, and we check in with Allison Williams. Rich, we saw Nathan Avaldi barehand a ball earlier in the game. Thankfully, he is okay. But whenever there is a liner back to the mound, it can be a concerning situation, especially when that ball is in the area of a pitcher's head. We saw the injury to Brandon McCarthy. That's really brought pitcher safety to the forefront of discussion in Major League Baseball. Earlier today, Ken Rosenthal tweeted a link to an article about just that, saying, "Yes, something can be done. Baseball looking at products that could help protect pitchers against head injuries." In that article, which you can find on FoxSports.com, they talk about the use. Uh, probably not helmets. Players probably would not go for that, even though we do see it at some lower levels of the game. But actually, a type of Kevlar protection, a shield or a foam layer underneath the hat that pitchers could wear and help give them a little more protection when they are out there on the mound and very vulnerable. The idea, I think, that is key, though, guys, is it would have to be something that isn't bulky, something that's comfortable, unobtrusive for the players to wear, something that they don't really even notice they're wearing. Otherwise, they're probably not going to go for it. But uh, the most important Important part of that article. The biggest thing is that baseball is talking about this, and that's uh, certainly good to see. Well, we've seen two very scary incidents over the last uh, couple of seasons. Was it uh, Rockies pitcher Juan Nicasio? Nicasio, yes. That was uh, hit and broke his neck on the fall after getting hit in the head. And yeah, actually, his. The damage to Nicasio was more on the fall than the, the actual direct hit of the ball. 1 2, Ruggiano takes outside. And then, of course, in Oakland. Although McCarthy uh, is up and tweeting, and teammates found him in the clubhouse the other day doing a crossword puzzle. And that's good to see. He and Oakland have had a, a terrific year. Ruggiano fouls it at the plate. Have to wonder with Mike Dunn up if that's all for Evaldi. Nathan's at a hundred pitches. Mm. 
Rhino Parker has this for you. How many games this year would have been delayed or postponed were it not for the Marlins' new ballpark? There would have been a couple of postponed. There, there was an Arizona series. Yes. There would have been a couple games that would have been postponed. That was that weekend. I think it rained the entire weekend. 2-2. Two -two. Luciano fouls it back. And we would have had had numerous. Gosh, just recently, I'm trying to think uh, who was in town. It was pouring during batting practice and early at game time. High pop up. Hayward is there and he makes the catch. Tomorrow night is a Kendall Toyota and West Kendall Toyota Wednesday night showdown. Love the sound effects. And I think it lives up to that when you got Chris Medlin, who is 8 and 1 with a 1 6 2 ERA, and Josh Johnson on the mound. That's tomorrow night, Jose Reyes bobblehead night here at Marlins Park. Allum has two outs here in the seventh. Kearns is up, and he takes inside. You know, a team that we just haven't talked a lot about. Of course, they're out west. The uh, how quietly the Giants have taken an eight-game lead in the National League West. As they uh, as they approach postseason, Brian Sabian always seems to find those veteran players. We talked about Scudero the other night. Angel Pagan, yeah, who I believe is leading the National League in triples. Yes, he is with 13. Madison Bumgarner won his 15th game last night. They beat the Rockies. The Giants did two to one. And that guy Buster Posey a couple of hits. Hitting 334. Kearns belts that one down the line and into the corner. And on his way to second Austin Kearns. Has got his sixth double of the year. A two out double that will bring Buck up. Whether Buck will face Mahalam or not, we'll find out. Freddie Gonzalez slowly climbing the steps and on his way to the mound. Brian Peterson's going to come in and run for Kearns. Yeah, I think uh, Freddie has seen the way John Buck has swung the bat against Mahalam. So he wants. Buck to have to face the right hander. We saw Moylan warming up earlier. Marlins tonight with their four hits, three of them for extra bases, a couple of doubles and a triple. Hits are tough to come by in a one nothing Marlin lead in the bottom of the seventh.
Chevron brings you tomorrow's starters. Chris Medlin, 8-1, a 1-6-2 ERA. In just nine starts, Josh Johnson, 8-12 and 12 with a 3.81 ERA. There you go. We start things at 6.30 with Marlins Live. Yeah, uh, just a nice thing there. And I mentioned before, Josh Johnson making his 30th start of the year. A nice accomplishment after nine starts last year. There's Peter Moylan. The man from down under who throws from down under. So he hasn't thrown from down under much. He spins towards second. Last year, a torn labrum and rotator cuff. He was on the disabled list from the end of September. He also missed time with a lower back strain. He saw had, those terrific he, numbers against the Marlins, too. He had surgery to repair a bulging disc last year. So he had disc surgery on his back and then shoulder surgery to fix the labrum and the rotator cuff. I believe he met his deductible. Buck sends it to right, hits it pretty well. Hayward goes back and is gone. John Buck, two-run shot. And there's your insurance. What a couple of nice swings from John Buck tonight. The triple to straightaway center. That was his first ever at bat against Peter Moylan. And when you face a guy who's down from the side the way Moylan is, you have to do everything. There's the Joey Cora hug. <laughs> you got to do everything to stay back. He got that sinker, but Moylan not at the top of his game. When he's at the top of his game, that sinker has some nasty sink to it. Great swing by John Buck. Super night for the Marlins catcher. And good to see the life in the Marlins dugout. Velasquez takes a breaking ball and the counts one and one so three nothing now Nathan Evaldi has thrown a four hit shutout through seven for Miami Velasquez back to the mound Moylan spears it flips on over to first to get the final out of the seventh inning the two out double by Kurtz. And then a two run homer by John Buck.
one of the outstanding baseball players in. Well, that's not to say that Mays and Aaron are any less than a Clemente, but certainly, how can they be any better? We're watching Buford, and he cannot get to it. Off the mark, and Clemente has tripled. Center, Clemente going back. He came in on the ball and had to go back. You very seldom see Clemente do that. Well, there is a very deep fly by Clemente. Look out. That could be gone. It is gone with a single, a oh, triple, some a great old highlights. Wow. Wow. Great calls on there. Great look at the old pirate uniform on Roberto Clemente Day. 3 0, Miami on top. We're joined now. Cookie and Joe. Hi guys, how are you? Good. We were just reliving some uh, Roberto Clemente there. Absolutely, one of the greatest players that has been in the National League or in the big leagues, I should say, Hall of Famer. Done everything there is in baseball: 3,000 hit, 300 average in lifetime, and what he did for the community and the way he passed away, trying to help the people in Nicaragua. I had great respect for him. I played many years against him. I saw him in Puerto Rico, played against him there too. A hell of a player. And he did a lot of things that fans and people don't know about how many people he had helped. Cookie, he was, Roberto Clemente was a 5-2 five, five a player before we heard that term. No question. Without any questions. And he did something, Tommy, that in that era that we're talking about helped a lot of people, both, as you know, Latin American players coming into the big leagues, and he spoke for them in many, many ways. And that's something that we respected very much. Joe and Cookie, is it, is it fair to say that he was the uh, Jackie Robinson for the Latin player? I would say yeah, so. There's I, no question about it. I would agree with that. I would agree with that. You know, I didn't see him play, obviously, because it was before my time, but I went to PNC Park a couple of years ago, and I actually crossed the Roberto Clemente Bridge. Very nice uh, statue and tribute there that they have in his honor. They have the uh, Roberto Clemente Museum. Yeah, yeah one, of the, one of the thrills for me was, was my first full season uh, in the major leagues was with Philadelphia in 1972, and that was Clemente's last season. So the Phillies and Pirates played a lot. And I got the opportunity to see him play an awful lot. All right, here's a trivia question for all of you. What do Dan Ugla and Roberto Clemente have in common? Wow, that's a good one. What was that? To pertain to baseball? Yep. Or? Rule five draft picks. Ah. There you go. That's wow. right. Because he was with the Dodgers before. Evaldi knocks it down, throws the first. And Carlos Lee was either going to catch it or wear it, and he caught it. <laughs> yes, he did. I, I think the great story with the Dodgers, they had at the time three AAA teams, and they, they thought they could hide Clemente and send him to Montreal. That was their trip, one of their AAA teams. That is right. And Absolutely. the uh, Pirates scouted him and said, no, no, he, we, we're going to take this guy. Yes, sir. That's the story right Smart there. Smart choice. Me you got that one right, yeah. They did the uh, best choice they ever did, have done. I mean, picking up a Hall of Famer. Lifetime, no question about it. And best job tonight, by the way, from Nathan Evaldi, I think, Cookie. Evaldi has done a great job, mixes all his pitches. He's pitching quick enough and throwing strikes. That's all he has to do to be successful. And then those uh, runs that we score for him, not too many of them, but at least gives him the lead and the chance to, for the kid to perform a lot better without any problem. All right, Joe and Cookie, have a good show. Happy Clemente Day. Same Thank to you, you guys. Likewise, stay dry. All right. I think with all the things that, as you heard Cookie talk about, that Clemente did off the field, it's great that Major League Baseball over the years has had an award, the Roberto Clemente Award. Baldy catches the corner and he goes three and one on Prado. All my sons moving in storage should Major League Baseball retire Clemente's number 21 like they did with Jackie Robinson's 42. This time if uses the glove hand and he makes the play and throws out Prado. Nathan Evaldi eight scoreless innings and Miami leads Atlanta three nothing.
Leading 3 0. We go to the bottom of the eighth, and I'm with uh, Mike Randall. Tomorrow, he's one of the coaches. His uh, South African team will play Israel in a world baseball qualifier. And uh, your Wait, ball club is here. How are you doing? How are you enjoying the game? Um, you, this yeah. game? Yeah, I'm loving the game. Uh, great for our guys. You know, a lot of our kids have not been to see a big league game before, so it's lovely for them. They're quite excited. Uh, you know, quite, you know, quite excited about it, and it's nice for them to sort of get themselves mentally prepared for tomorrow night's game. A lot of your players are minor league players here in the United States right now. Uh, not a lot. There are a few that are minor league players, and uh, but most of the guys in the squad are homegrown guys from South Africa. How big is baseball in South Africa? Sorry. How big is baseball back home in South Africa? Well, it's one of our minor sports as an amateur sport. You know, our big sports are the rugby. Soccer and cricket. Yeah. But we are hoping with the assistance of MLB, you know, Major League Baseball, is to grow and develop the game in our country. It's been around for 100 years or more, there, huh? 100 years, yes, in South Africa, yes. When you look at what it has to happen for development there, what is it that, that you need to do to become even better? Develop the game and promote it within our schools and make it competitive with the other big professional sports. Do they have Little League down there? Yes, we have Little League in, in, in most of our regions. Yes, we do have. So we start baseball at probably you know, the age of eight years old. Good luck tomorrow. What do you think about the matchup against Israel? Well, uh, that's going to be tough. It's tough. When you look at the Israel, you know, Israeli squad, a lot of the you know, American-based players playing triple-A, double-A, single-A. But, you know, you can never say never. In uh, 2006, we nearly beat Canada. We can beat Israel tomorrow. I really feel that. Uh, where have really you guys been working out? Uh, we, we were at Vera Beach for, for about five days and we just moved to Jupiter yesterday and we're down while we'll be playing the game there tomorrow night. All right, what time's the game? Seven o'clock tomorrow night. Good luck to you, coach. Thank you very much. All right, that's Mike Randall from the South African team. Players taking in the ball game here tonight, guys. It's one of the fun things about the World Baseball Classic. That's a great experience. It is. Talking to uh, players, you know, you, you get guys that uh, are in the minor leagues and get a chance to take on major league players obviously in the qualifiers no major league players will be playing but once you get to the world baseball classic tournament which starts in march of next year you'll see uh, those rosters loaded with major league players chad durbin takes over and greg dobbs pinch hits he busts his bat on a roller out to ugla so nathan evaldi's night is done well, he establishes a career high, eight innings, and eight terrific innings, shutout innings, gave up just four hits. Left-handers tonight, and we kind of pointed this out early in the game because lefties in his career had hit 333 against Nate Valdi. Lefties tonight, four for 21. Right-handers, 0 for 6. Dorkis Hernandez had a big hit. The RBI single with two outs in the third. That followed a John Buck triple. Actually, Buck tripled to open the inning. Then there were a couple strikeouts, which made Hernandez single that much sweeter for the Marlins. Boy, he hits a scorcher on a hop. Prado playing short tonight. And he throws out Gorky's Hernandez. So two outs for Durbin. The Major League Baseball postseason is coming up, and you can follow it on Fox and TBS, and it all starts October 5th on TBS with the wild card game. Solano now is bounced out, lined out, struck out. In case you haven't heard, there were three games rained out, including the Nationals Dodgers in D.C., the Phillies Mets in New York, and the Blue Jays Yankees also in New York. Out on the coast, the Rockies and the Giants are getting ready to go. Baltimore against Seattle tonight again. Texas and the Angels. Arizona against the Padres. By the way, I was reading last night when uh, Cliff Lee and the Phillies beat the Mets. Lee pitched outstanding. Dickey wasn't bad, but he took the loss. All right, Dickey will have three more starts, and, and it appears two of those three starts will be against the Marlins. 
All the uh, Cy Young Award contenders, at least uh, in terms of starters, seem to take a step back with a loss these last few days. Johnny Cueto. Oh. Cueto here the other night. Dickey and Gio Gonzalez at the hands of the Braves. That was on Sunday night. Now Ari Dickey now 18 and 6 with a 267 ERA. Durbin misses away. The counts two and two. White Sox a 2 2 tie with the Royals in the sixth. The Tigers are winning. They're beating up on Oakland eight to one in the bottom of the sixth inning. That's in Detroit. Pittsburgh losing to Milwaukee three nothing. In the top of the seventh in Pittsburgh. How about that game? <laughs> the Pirates had in Chicago last night. Mm. Three hour and 37 minute rain delay. Fly ball towards the line. Hayward over into the corner and he comes out with a ball. A nifty sleight of hand and a one two three inning for Chad Durbin. Anthony Evaldi goes eight shutout innings and hands it off to Steve Ciszek. Toyota trend for the night. Last night's crowd of 23,308 lifted the Marlins over the two million mark for the first time since 1997. I'll talk about the, the Marlins trending. The Marlins bullpen has been trending very well last night. Marlins bullpen worked five innings. Gave up four hits just one run no walks and ten strikeouts. Tom Kohler a nice part of that with five strikeouts. A.J. Ramos had a nice outing. So now it's up to Steve Ciszek to try to nail it down for save number 15 on the year. And he's got a challenge. Because over the year we've talked about his struggles against left handed batters. And he's going to see some tough ones in this inning. Jason Hayward, Chipper Jones, Freddie Freeman. Last few times out, C. Shack has fared better against lefties. Yeah, lefties at 287 against C. Shack this year. <laughs> right handers at 179. That fastball rides in at 93, and it's a ball and a strike. It's a pitch we were talking about the other night. If he can bury that breaking ball in that area to lefties, that'll. Give him some better success. 
Last 30 appearances, he's allowed just seven earned runs. Little liner, and it nestles in for a hit. Hayward around first, and he's got himself a double. Do that breaking ball there, and I don't know if the intent was to come back door with it, or if he wanted to bury it in that same place in. But he also give credit to Hayward. It was away. It was off the plate. He just had a nice swing. Let's check in with Allison Williams. A dub. Well, guys, when the apparently very observant Reds announcers were in town, they picked up on something I'm not even sure we noticed, and that is the name on Steve Ciszek's glove is not his, and they were a little curious about where it came from, so he sent out this tweet to clarify. He said, Dear Reds announcers, the name on my glove is my grandfather's name who passed away in 2003. Do not worry. I did not steal someone else's glove, and you can see on there it says Manuel Domingos, who is his grandfather, and Ciszek said he's had it on there for about the last three or four years. Nice. That's like, uh, was it Drew Storen we noticed had his Twitter handle on his? Had the Twitter handle on, <laughs> which I'm not sure is uh, is legal. <laughs> now Chipper Jones. Guys, we were talking about how some players have their Twitter handles on their gloves. That actually sounds like it's not going to be allowed next year. I was chatting with C-Sheck and Wade LeBlanc, who has a Bible verse on his glove, and they said Major League Baseball is looking at banning what can be on the glove. They don't know if it's going to be restricted to just the players' names or if it'll just ban things that are um, a form of promotion. Hmm. That means Tommy's going to have to take his Twitter handle off of all of his ties that he had had it engraved uh, embroidered in the uh, couple of sweater vests. <laughs> it's a three nothing lead. Ciszek trying to get Chipper Jones. There's the breaking ball for a strike. Two and two. Jones has singled lined out walked. Hayward has opened the inning with a double. The first extra base hit of the night for the Braves. Now he's gone three and two and. Obviously he'd rather pitch to Jones and make him do something than walk him and bring the tying run to the plate. Yeah, and uh, Freddie Freeman who has 20 home runs. After Freeman you've got Dan Ugla. And after Ugla, another tough left-handed bat with power, Brian McCann. This is not an easy three-run save for Ciszek, and he misses down low, and Jones is aboard. So here comes Freeman, and here comes Randy St. Clair, Marlins pitching coach. And the Marlins bullpen is busy right now. Mike well, Dunn well, and Heath Bell. Right now, Rich, the, uh, the Braves are in that mode doesn't matter who they see. They don't have to look at Nathan Evaldi anymore. Uh, it, sometimes that we talk about that how a guy can have great stuff and then you bring somebody in out of the bullpen he might have better stuff but it doesn't matter it's somebody different. Joey Cora directing the defense Ozzy going deeper into the bubble gum. And C-Shack needs some outs. Freeman has flied out twice and bounced into a double play. Big spot for Freeman, big spot for Ciszek, who gets a strike. And it's 0 1. Ball and a strike.
There's the backdoor breaking ball. He's One and two. Got a couple of shots now. He's got a chance to bury that that slider down and in or go up with a good fastball. You mentioned the 20 homers Freeman with 32 doubles this year as well. See check checks. And just missed. Wow good fastball good location. And it was in off the plate. Pretty good take by Freeman too. Two two is in. Now it's full. Ozzy wanted to know if it was in. It was. It was further in than the last pitch. Full count. Chipper Jones at first, Jason Hayward at second. Cishek trying to close a three nothing game in the ninth. Got him with a breaking ball. Talk about a gutsy pitch. Outstanding pitch. He missed with two really good fastballs. And then got Freeman on the slider. Great job. Here's Ugla. Now Ugla has struck out twice and has flied out. Cishek misses way outside. It is one and zero. Oh. You're right about this. This order. This is a tough group to negotiate your way through. Starting with Hayward and Jones and Freeman and Ugla and McCann. And maybe that's why Ozzy's got both Bell and Dunn up. Which, if Cishek gets Ugla, will be an interesting decision for Ozzy. Would he leave Cishek out there to go after McCann? Would he go get Dunn? To get McCann, knowing that Freddie has some right handed bats on the bench. First, Cishek has to get ugly. One and one. Eight shutout innings by Nathan Evaldi. Cishek trying to shut the door. Another breaking ball, another strike. Boy, he locked up Dan Ugla with that last breaking ball. And look where they've been. Warren Henry, Fox Tracks. If you throw another one, you go off the plate with it. Not quite that far. Now that counts two and two. Cishek has thrown 20 pitches in this inning. 10 strikes, 10 balls. And he's two and two on Ugla. Double by Hayward, a walk to Chipper Jones. He struck out Freeman on a 3 2 breaking ball. Well, that was close. No swing. And another full count. And another gut check time on the mound and at the plate. That's where he would have loved to have thrown the previous pitch. But a, a good, good eye, a good job by Ugla to check the swing. Let's see what C Shek comes with now. Ugla digging in. 3 2 coming. Breaking ball, broken bat, looped into center field. That's a base hit. Around second and headed for third is Chipper Jones. And Dan Ugla makes it 3 1. The Braves have the tying run at first. Here comes McCann. And I think Ozzy's coming out to get Cishek. He is. Ozzy wants the left hander 
And so Mike Dunn gets the call. He threw that breaking ball, but with the count three and two, he had to get a little more of the plate, plus it was up a little bit. Ugla didn't hit it all that hard, but got enough of it to score Hayward from second. So Mike Dunn comes in. McCann looks like he's staying in. It's 3-1 with one out. We told you this would not be an easy run through the Braves order. Cishek left handers decidedly better against them than righties. And he leaves for a left hander Mike Dunn who will come in and try to get a left hander in Brian McCann. You have another left hander on deck but I doubt uh, that Constanza will hit he's not even on deck right now. Reed Johnson has moved into that position. Dunn, of course, a former Atlanta Brave. McCann one for three. First pitch. Slider for a strike. 0 and 1. Chipper Jones is at third base. Dan Ugla across the diamond at first. McCann left center field that ball's deep back goes Peterson Johnson can't get it and it kicks away Jones will score Ugla will score and the Braves have tied it Brian McCann clobbering one to left field Brian Peterson made a leap and could not haul it in. Brian McCann this year against the Marlins had been 0 for 13 with runners in scoring position. He spanks this ball a long way to left center just off the tip of the glove of Brian Peterson. McCann ends up at second. Both runs score and we're back at zero. 3 3 tie. And the Braves wow. have the go ahead run in scoring position with one out. That's how their pastor Nicky pinch running from McCann. And Reed Johnson is the batter. Jeff Baker, another right handed bat, is on deck, and there's still only one out. So eight shutout innings by Nathan Evaldi is not enough. What a crying shame for Nathan Evaldi with the job that he did tonight. Johnson is always hitting lefties.
And Dunn misses the count is 2 and 0. The Braves have been doing this all year. They have been coming from behind an awful lot. Here, Reed Johnson, 16 pinch hits, 16 for 38 this year. Mm. 33 come from behind wins this year for the Braves. They've got three on the board here in the ninth. Bouncer up the middle. Solano playing there. Throws to first. Johnson is out, but Dunn's not out of it. Because here comes Baker with two outs and a runner at third. This is a, a great example of as a manager you can put the the pieces in the right place but it doesn't always work out. Dunn will walk Baker to get to the top of the order the left hander Michael Bourne. Well this. This does one thing it it gets you into the tough part of the Braves bullpen. Now that it's a 3 3 ball game. Speaking of which right on cue Kimbrell and Venters. Are both getting ready Kimbrell in case. The Braves score another run Venters. You would think. In case the game stays at 3 3. It's where you really have to be careful too now with Michael Bourne. Bourne is 0 for 9 in this series. He came into the game hitting 189 in September. That's even gone down because he's 0 for 4 tonight. But he has speed. And with a runner at third, you got to be alive for a punt. You got to be alive for anything chopped in the infield. You have to make a perfect play. Or the Braves take a lead. I would think, especially on the first base side with Carlos Lee over there and Dunn, the lefty, kind of falling off towards third. He misses DeBorn, the counts 1 0. Oh. He went around. A ball and a strike. So 3 nothing has become 3 3. Braves at the corners. Remember what's at stake here for Atlanta a chance to get within four and a half of the top spot in the East. Washington and the Dodgers rained out tonight. Another strike, it's one and two. Born 0 for 4 tonight. As Tommy pointed out, 0 for 9 in the series. 1 2 coming. And they count two balls and two strikes. Boy, this was all setting up so nicely. Evaldi, eight shutout innings. C Sheck, Miami's closer. Hayward's double. The walk to Chipper Jones. Ugla's broken bat single. Dunn came in and McCann drove in two with a double. And now Dunn has gone three and two. If he loses Bourne, I doubt that he'll face Prado. You've got Heath Bell in the bullpen. Three two coming. He got him. So Dunn strikes out Bourne. But the Braves strike for three. Brian McCann with a big hit in a 3 3 game.
Fox Fox Sports Florida is brought to you by AT&T, the nation's largest 4G network. AT&T, rethink possible. By Checkers, feast on. And by Infinity, luxury cars that deliver inspired performance. Something inspired the Atlanta Braves in the top of the ninth. Three runs, all of them charged to Steve Ciszek. And so here, the Marlins and the Braves arrive in the bottom of the ninth. Johnny Venters takes over. And again, the Braves have that terrific back end of the pen. A variety of changes. Paul Yanish is at shortstop. David Ross, remember Brian McCann was pinch run for. A lot of players that Freddie's using in this inning. And Prado, you're not going to take him out of the game. You can find a spot for him, so he moves from short to left. Now Venters, part of that uh, really good back end of the Braves bullpen. Bases Reyes, that fastball tails away. Reyes a double tonight, one for three. Monday, the 10th of the month at Milwaukee. Venters a week ago yesterday suffered a blown save his third and his fourth loss and that was at Milwaukee. Last year he led the major leagues with 85 appearances. One two pitch. And Reyes watches it sail away. Two and two. And this year hasn't quite been the same for Venters, but still live fastball, slider, good slider. Reyes pounds one into right field, a base hit. But you can't leave that fastball up and out over the plate to Jose Reyes. There's a start. Reyes aboard. 35 stolen bases for Reyes. Now you've got Carlos Lee, Justin Ruggiano. Well, there's a couple of things for Ozzy to think about here. Number one, you you'd hate for a double play ball to be hit. Carlos Lee can hit into a double play. If you have Reyes on the move, Carlos has excellent back control. He'll he'll put the bat on the ball somewhere. One and zero oh to Lee. Ground ball, Giannis a diving stop, and he tries the Amezica play, and it doesn't work. He may be hurt. He is. Yeah, he was cheated over a little for that double play ball. Boy, Giannis Boy, extended, he and he tried to. Look at he's holding that hand, that left hand that he extended, the glove hand. He tried to backhand it, ended up rolling it to the bag. Just came in the game. And he's holding on to that left wrist. See he's cheating just a little thinking double play. El Caballo crosses him up. There's that left hand that wrist extended. He tries to complete the play. But Reyes beats the throw. That does not look good at all. And let's hope for the best for Paul Yanish. Now, the Braves pinch ran with Pastor Nicky, who could play short. So now it looks like Prado will probably come back. And Hinsky goes back out into left and field. And Hinsky's going into left field.
watch the left wrist as it comes down on the ground as he tries to make that stab that backhand grab. And that's what it appears happened to Paul Yanish. All right now how do the Marlins play it from here with Ruggiano up against a lefty. You got Peterson on deck remember he came in for Kearns. And after that. The Marlins have John Buck. I think you give yourself some shots to swing the bat. You let Ruggiano swing the bat. You, you hate to have Ruggiano who has hit lefties so well a right handed bat. Bunt the runners over and you don't know he's going to be successful in doing that. And then that brings up the left handed bat of Brian Peterson. So. I let Ruggiano swing the bat. He squares and bunts foul. Corey Gear and the right hander is in the pen. Joe Espada just came down to whisper something into Ruggiano's ear. Those two had conferred while they were making the change. Now it's short. Oh, and one. You obviously have great speed at second with Reyes. And the outfield's not that deep. Ruggiano swings and misses. Counts 0 and 2. Venter's ready. It pops out of Ross's glove. Reyes is on his way to third and he gets there. Great instincts in action by Jose Reyes. He was off and running as soon as that ball popped out of the glove of David Ross. He didn't wait to see how far it was going to go. He took off immediately. Now the infield is in. Carlos leaves at first Reyes at third one and two to Ruggiano. No swing. Two and two. The Braves trying to choke off the run at the plate. There's nobody out in the bottom of the ninth. Swing and a miss he struck him out. Really ran that one away and Ruggiano strikes out. Now there's an out and the Braves can get out of this with a ground ball. Is that good Venter's fastball but look at the the action two seamer just took a severe dive away from Ruggiano. Now look at that Fox track. So a big spot now for Peterson. Infield is still in. That does go as a pass ball. Peterson squares and takes out. Oh, they'll say he went after it. Ozzy can't believe it. Third base umpire Bill Miller calls it a a strike, and that Peterson attempted to bunt at the ball. Let's take a look. He pulled back late. Well, that's a tough call. Raise the runner at third.
And Peterson is behind in the count just like that 0 and 2. That home run. Finished. The final start by Javi Vasquez. In the rain. At. Sun Life Stadium. Venters 0 2. Struck him out. Wow. So Miami has the winning run 90 feet away, and Johnny Venter strikes out Ruggiano, strikes out Peterson. And now Freddie's going to that bullpen to get a matchup in his favor, righty against righty. Nasty pitch by Venters. You get behind your left handed batter and you get behind him, you're in trouble. So the guy who's produced the most tonight is John Buck. And he'll face Corey Gearin, who's been really tough from the right side. 3 3, two outs in the ninth. John Buck tonight in the third. A triple over the head of Michael Bourne. He would score the first run of the game. In the seventh against Peter Moylan, a two run homer to right. That gave Miami a three nothing lead, a lead they would hold into the ninth. The Braves got three in the ninth inning. The Marlins had runners at the corners and nobody out. But now there are two outs. Here's Buck against Corey Gearin. First pitch and a ground ball. Ugla has it. Throws the first extra innings. Wow. Venters and Gearin pitch out of a first and third and nobody out spot. And on to the tenth this game goes.
Basketball. Brought to you all season long by Jack Link's Beef Jerky, official sponsor of Extra Innings. This was not supposed to go to Extra Innings. If the script held, the eight shutout innings by Nathan Evaldi would have held. But Steve Ciszek ran into trouble. Mike Dunn couldn't bail him out. Ciszek gave up an RBI single by Dan Ugla. Dunn gave up a two-run double to Brian McCann. And just like that, the Braves had tied it. The Marlins had an opportunity in the bottom of the ninth. They could not win it. And so on we go to the 10th. And the 10th right now belongs to Heath Bell, who comes out to try to restore a little sanity and give the ball club one more chance in the bottom half. Boy, all three of those runs, too, charged to Steve Ciszek. Prado takes a strike. Hayward and Chipper Jones coming up as well. So the Marlins are in an extra inning duel with a team that has one of the best bullpens in the National League. And has a lineup stocked with bats like Prado, Hayward, Chipper, Freeman, Ugla. Remember, McCann is out of the game. Little tapper, Buck picks it up, fires the first in time, and Prado is out. Good play by John Buck. Yeah, it was, and he, he didn't rush it. He took his time once he scrambled out and got that little tapper, squared up and made a strong throw to first. Hayward now, he started things in the ninth against Ciszek with a double. Also has a bunt hit. He is two for four. Seven hits apiece, three runs apiece. Bell gets a strike and it's 0 and 1. So I guess it's time in extra innings to dive back into emails and tweets. Thought we were done for the night heading into that ninth inning. Now we'll see what we have here. Gina in Missouri apparently just joined us. If you guys talked about the Roberto Clemente Award, maybe I missed it. Why has Lomo been nominated? He's been nominated for all the things that he does in the community. The Roberto Clemente Award is awarded each year to a major leaguer who has gone above and beyond while serving the community for the team in which he plays. Each major league team nominates a player to be considered for the award. Little tapper. It's a foul ball. Buck was in fair territory, but he reached over it, and it's where the ball is at the time it's touched. Well, the count's 0 and 2. We've had a. Here's a look at it. And it's clearly foul. We've had a few people ask about Gary Thurman. As the uh, first base coach, mm -hmm. Thurm's not down there. Omir Munoz is filling in tonight. Thurman had some uh, family business to attend to. There's Omir.
Hayward goes after a ball in the dirt. Buck will have to throw someone out again. And he does. Nice uh, footwork by John Buck. He's kind of subtle. But once he picked up that uh, ball that got away up the line, quick footwork got him inside so he could have a nice angle to throw to Carlos Lee. Chipper Jones now. Jones has singled, lined out, walked twice. And he arrives here with two outs and nobody on. Top of the tenth. Jones fouls it back. And it's 0 and 1. Braves have done a nice job of keeping him fresh throughout the season. Thanks to a guy uh, named Martin Prado. It's nice when you can sit Chipper Jones and then fill him in with a guy like Prado. Uh, good breaking ball. Remember at the end of 2010. As Jones takes up. Though the Braves did get to the postseason. They, they lost Chipper Jones and they lost Martin Prado. Prado had the hip injury. That's right. Jones had the, I believe it was a meniscus. Last year, the Braves, of course, didn't get to the postseason, even though they won 89 games. Ball in the dirt. And the count runs four, three, and two. Boy, what a night for Miguel Cabrera. Tigers with a 12 2 lead over Oakland. Cabrera three hits two home runs six RBI's has 40 home runs on the year. One of those uh, grand slam. Swing and a miss down goes Chipper Bell works a one two three ten. Three three. Park. The night started with the roof open. Marlins had a three nothing lead going into the ninth. Couldn't hold it. This guy Corey Guerin came in. 
And he was able to get John Buck to finish off the ninth inning. Kieran stays in. Gil Velasquez, the pitcher's spot, and then the leadoff spot. Dislocated left shoulder mm. for Paul Yanish. Wow. Rob Brantley is on deck. Marlins. Velasquez rolls it up the middle. There's Prado to make the play. So here's Brantley hitting in Dobbs spot. Giancarlo Stanton is the last regular left and of course Stanton with that sore side is not expected back until Friday. Brian Peterson has already come in for Austin Kearns. Greg Dobbs pinch hit for Evaldi. In the bottom of the eighth. And that's how the night started, too. Evaldi went eight shutout innings. Brantley pulls one foul, and it counts one and one. Well, what a nice, uh, nice little run. Rob Brantley is on. Brantley working on an eight game hitting streak. Look at the number 480 during that time. Good at bats. Working counts. Pulls that pitch foul. Garen's out in front one and two. Eventually we hope. Marlins live presented by checkers. Look they were ready in the uh, in the bottom of the ninth. They were at their spots. Coats on Hey, Niners always ready. Tie straight. Craig I'm not so sure. <laughs> one two. And it stays at one and two. Two balls, two strikes to Rob Brantley. You got Gorky's Hernandez on deck. Corey Guerin. Fourth reliever to work for Freddy Gonzalez. 2 2. Well, the blown save has not been kind. To Miami. Yeah, it's it's I was thinking about it. It's kind of a microcosm of the season. Garen misses away. And some of those Rich have been games such as the one tonight with a three nothing lead, with a three run lead. Yeah, those are the gut punches that uh, for teams it's really hard to recover from. Good at bad here by Brantley. Now the 3 2. And it's in. And the rookie walks. Perfect example of the kind of at bats that he's had. Gorky's Hernandez now, his single. Drove in the first run of the night in the third. He's one for four. Uh, 
That sounded like sound it like, hit him. Sounded like he got it. It did. Hernandez is aboard. Here comes Solano. Brantley's in scoring position. This fastball from Guerin just takes off and clips the. This looks like the pant leg on that right thigh. We got Brantley, the lead runner, with one out. Solano, and he swings and foul tips it into the glove of David Ross. Remember, you got Eric Hinsky in left, Michael Bourne's in center. You got a real strong arm in right, and a very accurate one in Jason Hayward. Yeah, the Braves lose some defense when they had to make that move to put Hinsky in left field. Corey Guerin steps off. Solano an 0 for 4 night. Had a couple hits last night. His average has dipped down to 277. <laughs> and that fastball rode in on him and caught the corner. It's 0 and 2. Boy, it. Uh, Right at the letters. Ozzy Guillen didn't like it. Reyes is on deck. In the dirt, Ross. Terrific job by Ross because that was a grenade. And Brantley at second anticipated that well. He was shifting and moving to third. If it had skipped away just a little bit, Brantley would have tried it. That's what you try to look for if you're the runner. You try to you, you try to judge how far it is away from the catcher. Of course, Brantley being a catcher, he knows what that's all about. Solano swings and misses at a breaking ball that was way out. And so here comes Reyes. It's up for him at in the bottom of the 10th with two outs. Remember Miami in the ninth got base hits to open the inning and Reyes moved up on a pass ball. But Ruggiano struck out. Peterson struck out. That was against Venters. And Guerin came in and got Buck on a ground ball. And that ended the Marlins threat the ninth and here they are the Marlins with runners at first and second in the tenth in some key situations the Marlins haven't had real good at bats. Reyes is two for four. And Guerin stays away one and oh. I like the lead that Brantley is getting. He's trying to maximize his lead out there to get as good a jump as possible on a base hit. That one's even further out. It's got that bowling ball sink to it. See if he comes in with a fastball. That one missed. Ross hesitated. Like he thought that was a strike. And it was off the plate. CB Buckner has both managers barking at him. You turn Reyes loose 3 and 0. No. You got Carlos Lee on deck. You got Carlos Lee on deck. Mm. 
The throw behind is high and Brantley is back. It was a called strike. It's three and one. Yeah, they saw the kind of lead that Brantley was uh, trying to get. David Ross picked that up. Prado, the shortstop, picked it up. And you saw Reyes taking all the way three and zero. Oh. Well, that's three and one. Their situation too as a base runner. You you should know that he's taking, and you don't have to get off quite as far. Breaking ball for a strike. Boy, one with a three-one slider. That's the first uh, slider he's thrown to Reyes in the at bat. And it was a strike. And I think you could see the surprise in, in Reyes. At least now he's seen it. And now the runners will be on the move. Which is a big help for Brantley at second. Gorkis Hernandez is the trail runner. Garen ready. Runners on the move. The 3 2. Reyes a little looper in the right center field. And it falls. Ball game. Let's go home. Bradley scores. Reyes wins it. And the Marlins knock off the Braves in extra innings. Well, it took a lot longer than expected or desired. But the final ending for the fish is a sweet one. The rookie Rob Brantley drawing a one out walk. After Gorky's Hernandez was hit. Solano struck out and Reyes on a 3 2 pitch. Threw a flare out into right center. Boy that's the thing of beauty. Just gets it off the end of the bat. Drops it over the head of Ugla and out of the reach, the long reach of Jason Hayward. It all started to a nice at bat by Rob Brantley to score that run who drew the walk to get on base. For Reyes, his third hit of the night, and it is the game winner. And Miami evens the series at a game apiece. Four runs, eight hits for the Fish, three runs, seven hits for the Braves. And this is a tough loss for the Atlanta Braves, too. Remember the catch that Hayward made to save a run last night where he came in and made a shoe top grab? Let's go down to Allison Williams. Hey, Dub. Hey, guys. Here with uh, Jose Reyes, Reyes, who's uh, chatting with Carlos Lee. Uh, Reyes, you come up with the bloop single to drive in the winning run. Take us through the AB as you worked yourself into a full count and then were able to get the hit. You know, he threw me like two changes, you know, and away. I was able to, to take it, you know, and, and went deep in the count, you know, and thanks God that I, I have opportunity, you know, to, to drive the winning run, you know, to put my team to win the ball game. How rewarding was it for you guys to get this win in extra innings after the way the ninth went? I mean, it's not that. We, we used to win. I mean, you know, we want to close it out in the ninth inning, but we wasn't able to, to do that, you know, but we, we're going to take the win all the way. The ninth inning offensively, where was the frustration? You, you had first and third, nobody out. Where'd you guys come up short? I mean, you know, that kind of stuff going to happen sometimes in baseball. I mean, you know, we know what's able to do the job there, you know, but, you know, I come through in the, in the big situation, we win the game. Thank you, Jose. Thank you. Guys. All right, thanks, Allison. Jose Reyes and the Marlins walk off. Winners. Off the end of the bat. And this game is over. Marlins live coming up.